morning this morning. We're doing baptisms. Yay! A great way to celebrate people's, you know, confession of Christ. So it's going to be exciting. We're going to enter into worship. I'm going to invite you to stand because we want to go straight in. If you just want to close your eyes, turn your affections to the Lord and just welcome the Holy Spirit who's already here because He's so good and present. Oh, I'm just going to read from Psalm 118 in the Passion Version today. For the Lord our God has brought us His glory light. I offer Him my life in joyous sacrifice. Tied tightly to your altar, I will bring you praise. For you are the God of my life and I lift you high exalting you to the highest place. So let's keep on giving our thanks to God for He is so good. His constant tender love lasts forever. So why don't we just lift up our affections to Jesus. Let's offer Him our lives in joyous sacrifice this morning. Jesus, King Jesus, we worship You. We love You. Why don't you just start speaking out your thankfulness to the Lord. Don't wait for me or the worship team. Just start telling Him how much you love Him. Thank You for Your sacrifice. So this is just a little sacrifice of praise to You today, Jesus. We say we are tied tightly to Your altar. We make ourselves the altar this morning, Lord. We open up our hearts. And we say, would you burn in us? Would you burn upon us? And we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to be amongst us this morning. We bring you praise this morning, Jesus, because you are the worthy one. You're worthy of our adoration. You're the God of our life. We lift you high and we lift up your name, King Jesus, which is the name that is above every other name. We worship you this morning. And we are gonna keep on giving our thanks to You because You are good. We declare that You're good. You have always been good and You will always be good and You do good. Your love is constant and tender. Your affections are for us. And so we pour out our devotion on You this morning, Jesus. Let it be fragrant to You, King Jesus. Holy Spirit, we say, have Your way amongst us. Have Your way amongst us this morning. We honour You. We love You, Lord. There's plenty of space at the front here if you want to come up the front. Let's just give Him all of our affection and devotion this morning. Amen. Our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place. Come and let, oh, come and let your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place. Come and let your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place for you are the one we want to meet. Jesus shine through all the praises that we sing. Sing, we've come. Come to give you highest praise, highest praise. We've come to love you in this place. We've come, we've come to give you highest praise, highest praise. We've come to love you in this place for you. Jesus 
your presence still I praise, still I praise Come and let your presence fill this place Jesus, Jesus, we say you're welcome here Let your presence fill this place Let it flood this place this morning Holy Spirit, flood us this morning Overwhelm us with your goodness We're here for you We're here for you. Just tell Him that. Just say, I'm here for you, Jesus. I'm here for you, Jesus. We're going to celebrate baptisms this morning. People in our community who are making a public declaration of their faith in Jesus. It's very, very exciting. I'm going to invite everyone to come up here. And they're just going to take a moment to share their name and why they're getting baptised. And I just want to invite you, if you're in this place and you see these guys going into the water, you know, when we go down into the water, it's like our old life and our sin gets washed. We're cleansed. And as we come up, we are a new creation. Obviously, when we say yes to Jesus, that happens. But this is like a public declaration of that that's happened in the Spirit. It's a significant time. It was something that Jesus did, even though He didn't need to, but He did it as an example for us. And if you are feeling stirred this morning and you didn't register to be baptised, we want to open the invitation to you this morning. If you feel the Holy Spirit saying, I want you to go up there and I want you to get baptised, we're okay with that. We're okay to respond to the Holy Spirit. We'll give you a towel and help you dry off afterwards but there's plenty of space for this this morning. Okay, so come on over here. What's your name and why do you want to be baptized? Uh, my name is Jackie. I want to be baptized because I'm so thankful for His Word, for His grace, and um, it's that time in my life. Come on, Jackie. You just wait over here. I love it that we've got some kids and youth up here this morning. Come on. Well, and Jackie, you're youthful too. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Hannah, and I want to take a step in my faith in Jesus. Come on, go for it, Hannah. Hi there, what's your name? My name's Carolyn, and I, I want to give my life to Jesus. Come on, Carolyn. Jesus loves you. Hello, young lady, what's your name? Lucy. And why do you want to get baptized? Because I love Jesus. Oh, come on. What's your name? Adriel because I love Jesus and I want to give my life to Him. Come on! Just come over here. What's your name? My name is Helena and I love Jesus. I want to give my life to Him. It's a new beginning. Come Thank on. you, Jesus. Thank come you. On. Come on! What's your name? Ilya. I like Jesus. We're very excited for you, Ilya. My name is Patricia. Uh, I feel happy for here or here. <laughs> oh, Patricia, we're very happy for you to get baptized. <laughs> Do you speak Spanish? Why don't you say it in Spanish? Uh, Colombia. I'm from Colombia. Okay. Why do you want to get baptized? Okay. Love Jesus. Yes, I love. <laughs> <laughs> if I could speak Spanish, I would speak Spanish to you. What's your name? My name is Jean Stanley Jones. Uh, I want to live for Jesus Christ. Come on. Okay, let's stretch our hands out to these guys. They're going to go into the baptismal. Let's stretch our hands out. If you want to come forward. Oh, there's someone else. Come on over here. So I'm sorry to miss you there. What's your name? My name is David. Uh, to me, baptism is like a symbolism of leaving your old life behind and becoming a new creation in Jesus. Amen. Come on, David. You can come up in the line here. Oh, there's another one. Come on. Woo! Anyone else? Get your butt down here. <laughs> What's your name, young man? Um, my name is Jesse, and I want to be baptized because I feel like it marks my personal identification with Jesus Christ. Come on. Wow. Come on. This is fantastic. Let's stretch our hands out. Is that everyone so far? It's not too late. You can come up anytime. Well, 
before the baptismal tank gets closed. Okay, let's stretch our hands out. Holy Spirit, would You fill every person up here. Father, thank You for them making this public declaration and identifying with You, Jesus. We bless each and every one of you to go deeper and further than you could have ever imagined in the Holy Spirit. And may your lives be marked from this day in Jesus' Name. They're gonna go in. We're gonna continue worshiping. But if you wanna come to the front, you can cheer and celebrate while we're worshiping and then just enjoy Jesus. Once it's done, we'll just continue worshiping and then we'll go into the message later. Okay, guys, let's go.
morning. Keep, de- keep declaring how worthy He is. <laughs> Holy are you, Jesus. Worthy are you, Lord, over all of us, over all the earth, Lord.
adore you, King Jesus, the worthy one. We declare that you are the one who is called faithful and true. You are faithful from one generation to the next and we worship you and adore you. You are the way, the truth and the life. You are the holy and righteous one, the pure and spotless one. You're the lamb that was slain. You're the everlasting father. You're the prince of peace. You're our saviour. You're the bridegroom. And we adore you. Just stir your heart up. Just stir yourself up in this moment and just tell him how wonderful he is, how grateful you are. Just speak out his name. Worthy one. Worthy one, the pure and spotless one, the one who's riding on a white horse. You're the righteous one. You're the holy one. You're set apart. There's nobody who compares with you, Jesus. Nothing compares to knowing you, King Jesus. You're the Prince of Peace. You're the Lamb who was slain. From the foundation, before the foundation of the earth, there is nobody like you in all of heaven and all of earth. You're perfect in every way. And we adore you, King Jesus. We worship you. We love you. Thank you that you have loved us with an everlasting love. Your love goes on and on and on and on. And there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We love you. We love you. We join with all of the creatures around your throne and the elders saying, worthy, worthy, Worthy are you, worthy, worthy, worthy are you, faithful and true. Oh, we love you. Think in your presence, Holy Spirit. Open our eyes to see you as you truly are. Lord, remove any filters right now in this place. to claim this week. Lord, we shake it off. Everything that's tried to hold us back. We just lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You're beautiful.
love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. Oh, how we love you. We love you in the love that you have lavished upon us. And we worship you. really enter in, kind of heard about the love of God, you've heard about Jesus, but you haven't experienced him and his love on the inside of you, in the depths of your heart. We, I want to take this moment to, to give you the opportunity to respond to a love that is faithful and true, demonstrated on the cross when Jesus came gave his life for us as a ransom. He died in our place. I mean, it's an out of this world kind of love. It's a love like no other. And there's an invitation in this place this morning for you to step into that love that you can never get to the end of. so wide and so deep we can never get to the end of it and I'm aware that there may be people here you've never yielded your heart and your life to Jesus and I want to give you an opportunity to do that right now in this moment I'm not trying to clean yourself up can I just ask us just to stand up wherever we're at you don't have to go back to your seat in this moment there was a day where I had to surrender. I got to surrender to Jesus when I was 21. I'd been running away from Him for my whole life. But He was chasing me down with His love. And He's, he's that good. And I want to give you an opportunity today, whether you're in this room or you're watching online, to stop running and to let his love capture you. And it's a very simple thing. You know, you, we just, all we do is we just say, God, I, I stop. I let go of trying to do it myself in my own strength. And I surrender to you. And I say yes to you being Lord of my life. It's as simple as that. So if you've never said yes to Jesus, or maybe you've been running away from Him, I want to give you that opportunity to pray with me right now. So we're all going to pray together. Lord Jesus, I recognize that I've been trying to do this in my own strength. I've been running away from you and your love. Right now, I choose to stop and surrender to your overwhelming love that was demonstrated on the cross where you gave your life for me, where you died in my place, where you became one with my sin all the bad things and all the good things I've tried to do. I give them all to you and I surrender my heart. I surrender my whole life to you and I invite you to come into my life. I declare that you are my Lord and Saviour today. Holy Spirit, would you fill me now? Thank you that you've washed me clean. Thank you, Lord. And if you've prayed that prayer right now, we be believe that you are born again. <laughs> it is a wonderful and marvelous journey. 
saying yes to Jesus that you have embarked on right now. And I want to give you an opportunity to to let us know that you said yes to Jesus today. So if you're watching online, just type it in the chat. But if you're in this room, I'm going to ask you to do a really brave thing and come forward because we want to meet you. We want to pray with you. We want to celebrate with you. We want to help you in the next steps of this beautiful, glorious journey. And so we have a team over here who are waiting just to chat with you. If you came with a friend and you feel a bit nervous, it's okay. You can ask your friend to come with you. Or maybe just the person next to you say, I just, I said yes to Jesus. Will you come down the front with me? But we want to give you time in this meeting right now to come forward and just, and just continue on that journey and have our team over here pray with you. If you feel a bit nervous about it, we understand what that feels like. We're not going to do anything strange. We just want to celebrate. So I'm going to wait for a moment longer for you to step out of your seat and come down the front, if that's you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, you can come over here. We've got a few over here. Come on, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let's give them a big cheer, guys. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. There's still time. Do not wait. Come on. It's the best decision you could ever make. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Thank you, Lord. (laughs) Woo. Let's just give Jesus one more shout of praise. Jesus, you're glorious, magnificent, and beautiful. And we love you. We love you. Thank you so much, worship team. Wow. Why don't you just greet someone? Just say hi. Give them a high five. Introduce yourself. Wow. Gosh, thank you, Lord. Wow. Well, while you're finding your way back to your seat, I want to greet you and say welcome on this beautiful, sunny morning. It is wonderful to gather together. If this is your first time here, we want to give you a really, really warm welcome. We're so glad that you came. We're so glad you're tuning in online. We'd love to connect with you and help you connect if you would like to with this community without any pressure. If you want to find out more about what God's doing, about what's going on, you can go through the glass doors at the back there at the end of the service and our team will connect with you and get you plugged in if you would like to or if you'd like to find out about different events that we have going on or if you have any questions about anything, even if it's not your first time, you can go through and ask in the Welcome Center. Well, my name's Ash. I'm really glad to see you. It is so wonderful to be together. Have you guys been um, seeing what's going on in the States? There's, a, there's some incredible things happening in the Holy Spirit. Beautiful and marvelous and wonderful and glorious things happening on some college campuses and in different church communities. God is really turning up the heat and it's beautiful. And I know many people, I love what I love about media or social media is we get to, if we can't get there in person, we get to tune in and celebrate and and participate online. But I also am aware that there's lots of questions about what's happening and, and people trying to define what God's doing 
And I just think he is an out of this world and out of the box kind of God, isn't he? (laughs) And the ways that we've seen him move before, sometimes he does it again, or sometimes he does it really different. And I want to encourage you. I want us, you know, Murray and I, I are really enjoying and celebrating what the Holy Spirit is doing you know, amongst us here, but across the United States, especially in the young people. It is wonderful. And we want to encourage this church family to stay in the place of wonder and awe at how magnificent and beautiful and out of the box Jesus is and not try to define it, say it's revival or it's not revival or because this is happening, it's God, because this is not happening, it's not. Let's just stay out of this earthly realm, hey? And let's let's celebrate and honour and just say, Jesus, would you be glorified in us and wherever you're choosing to sovereignly move? And we just posture our hearts with hunger and, and say we're desperate for more of you. Yeah, do you want to just lift up your hands? You can stand with me if you want to and just say, Jesus, you're wonderful. We love what you're doing around North America and across the globe. We say yes to whatever you want to do. Lord, would you continue to pour out your spirit without any measure? Would you bring freedom and restoration and revelation and transformation? Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. We celebrate you, Jesus, and we say you are not a man, you are not human in any way, and we do not want to box you in in any way. So, Lord, we just lift up to you our love and our praise and our affection, and we say, come, Lord Jesus, and have your way amongst us, whatever it looks like, Lord. Keep our hearts pure. We keep our hearts soft to you, Lord, and we just press in for more whatever it looks like in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you feel stirred in any way, Lillian has felt the Holy Spirit just um, inviting her to just gather in the upper rooms at 1 p.m. after the church. You are welcome to go join her if you would like. Uh, Lillian, do you want to just stand up so people can see you? She's our um, Director of Supernatural Ministries. You can gather up there with her if you would like to, just to wait on the Lord. We might be doing some more things like this, but again, we're just hungry for more. I'm gonna, Murray's going to come up here while he's coming up. We're going to continue worship by returning our tithes and sowing our offerings to the Lord. This is an opportunity for us as a community just to give back to the Lord what he has so faithfully given us. If you're a member of this church, I want to honor you and thank you for every way that you pour out back on Jesus. Green there for ways to give, and I want to bless you as you do that. If you're a guest with us, you do not need to feel under any compulsion to do that. If you want to, we bless you, but there's no pressure. So, Lord, would you multiply what's in our hands so that we can join with you in doing what you want to do, so we can get in line with you to bring your kingdom to this city, these cities, and this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Whew. Go for it, my love. Just stretch out your hands. Bless Murray <laughs> with more, 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 more. Oh, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, thanks, Ash. So good to be together this afternoon. Oh, isn't God good? So good. It's true. He's better than we know. More beautiful than we can behold and imagine. There's going to be a moment, the Bible says, when all it's going to take is one look at him in his full glory, and we are going to instantly be like him. That's how spectacular he is. That when you look at him, you won't be able to help it, but go, like that, boom, just like Jesus. (laughs) That's going to be a great, great, great day. But until that day, the work of the Holy Spirit is to help us to keep beholding Jesus, to keep looking at him and getting transformed little by little by little by little. 
You know, we live in this tension, this reality of, of, in the scriptures of who God has already made us to be and who we're becoming. Of what God has already done and what God is currently doing. Of the holiness that we have already been established in and the holiness that God is birthing in us. And so we hold those two things in tension, don't we? We hold those two things of like, thank you, God, for what you've already done, and we love what you're doing right now, and we celebrate and we you know, get full of excitement about you right now because who you are to us right now is enough. But at the same time, we know that there's more, and so we look for more as well. We kind of live in this tension of the now of the kingdom of God and the there's more to come of the kingdom of God. And so this, this, this next little season, we're going to, as part of our overarching theme this year of um, come up here where we believe that God's calling us up to experience him in greater measure, to be transformed in that experience, and for our lives and the way that we think and the way that we live and the way that we behave to shift in accordance with who God is for us, in us, and through us. And then for God to flow out of us to transform the world around us. And so we're beginning a new sermon series called New Reality. New Reality. And we're going to be taking like 13, 14 weeks to look at the book of Ephesians. Without Easter, there'll be a bit of a break. But, um, you know, and honestly... We could literally spend the next five years on it. As I was preparing today, I was thinking I could spend a week on each verse. But fortunately for you, (laughs) I'm not. (laughs) But I'm going to try and get through some. You know, so, um, new reality. And so, I'm just going to pray. Holy Spirit, we really, 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 really love you. And we're so grateful for all that you're doing amongst us. Lord, I'm so grateful for the salvations this morning in the first service and the second service. I thank you for the baptisms, Lord, evidences of the move of God, of the spirit of life breaking out amongst us. I thank you for hearts standing up this morning and saying, Lord, we're going after you. We're hungry for you. And Lord, we're asking that you would keep moving and keep crashing in on us and all that you're doing in different places, Lord, whether it looks like that or not, Lord, we want more of you. And Lord, but what we're asking for today, Lord, is not just uh, information, not just even inspiration, where you're telling us this is how you should live differently, but Lord, we want revelation of the Spirit of God and we want transformation. Lord, that we don't look the same when we walk out of here because we've encountered the person of truth, Jesus, and that truth sets us free. Oh, Huh. So we're, we're, we're going to start. We're going to start in Ephesians chapter 1. So we're going to put that up on the screen and we're going to read Ephesians 1 1 to 14 together this morning, this afternoon now. And, you know, we're going to unpack a few little things. I guess the beauty of doing this over the next few weeks is that we get to camp out on a few different themes and experience God. But so today is kind of like a, a starter manifesto. So if we could have the uh, Ephesians 1 up on the screen. Thank you. And I'd like to do this. I'd like you to stand, if you would. I know you've just sat down. But this is such an amazing and incredible passage of Scripture that it would be good to read it out together. So we're reading it from Ephesians uh, in the ESV. Hopefully you can read that. And uh, we're just going to read it. Just follow my voice, okay? Let's not, don't know, it's no call and response. Once I get going, just pick it up and run with me. Okay, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him 
in love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth in whom we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory in whom you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him was sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Woohoo! Thank you. You may, you may sit. I was just thinking we could probably just read that scripture again over and over again for the next little while and see what the Holy Spirit does. It's such a glorious scripture. So this is, this is the letter to the Ephesians. The, the, uh, Ephesians was a church. Uh, and, uh, Ephesus was a city in, in a province called Asia Minor in the Roman day. Uh, actually, when it's, it starts... Uh, to the saints who are in Ephesus, but actually, if you look at the earliest manuscripts, the word Ephesus doesn't appear. So it, most theologians think that it's possible that this letter was a circular letter to be read in multiple different churches to experience, for them to understand who God is. And it's, you know, we, we know it now as the, the book of Ephesians. But there's a couple of things right off the bat to notice. The first thing is that he says, he's speaking to the saints and he's calling the people of God, the saints, the holy ones. But those holy ones, he says, are in Ephesus, but they're in Christ Jesus. You and I have two addresses. We live in the natural realm. We live on this place. You might live, you know, we live in the GTA or beyond. We live in, for us, we live in Mississauga. You know, we live in Ontario. We live in Canada. We're the saints in Toronto, but we're also the faithful in heaven. We have an eternal dwelling and an eternal abode that you and I, even if we're not aware of it, it's still true that we're in heaven. And so the purpose of Paul's letter, he's written this to the church that he started and it was a glorious, amazing church. And his purpose is this, to lift up the people of God to understand who they are in God. First of all, to understand who God is. And then to understand who Christ is and what Christ has accomplished. And then who we are in Christ. And then for that to actually shift the way that you and I think about ourselves, think about our gathering, think about the words that come out of our mouth, the things that we do, our families, our parenting, our jobs, our everything that we do, even our warfare against the demonic realm. Paul's saying, I want you to come up into this vantage point to see that you are now not who you thought you were and not who you used to be. And at the heart of this letter is the message that believers, we possess an entirely new identity by virtue of our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's also written as, a, in a sense, like a cultural resistance. So in Ephesus, the, the, the area was, was famous because uh, there was a, a goddess with a, a temple there to the goddess Artemis or Diana, who was the Roman and the Greek god of fertility and witchcraft. 
There was a whole, there was an occult of the emperor where the emperor uh, was worshipped as God and people had to bow down and worship him. There's a whole industry developed, devoted to idol worship. There's also a practice of witchcraft. In fact, what God did in the Ephesus church was so glorious and so beautiful that it says that the people that practice witchcraft came and burn all of their books. And it was 50,000 silver pieces worth of, of, of merchandise that was burned. And Paul, when he was there, the Spirit of God was so rich and so heavy upon him, in, unlike in other places in that time where even his handkerchief and his apron when he was working, people came up with the idea, you know what, that's anointed, I want it. And they would go and lay it on the sick and they'd get healed. Oh, for days like that, hey? They're coming. Because anything that we believe in the Bible, everything that we read in the Bible is ours by the Spirit of God, right? So he's writing against this imperial cult and this worship of Diana and this magic and this witchcraft. And he's saying, look, this, you, know, you might have been part of that in the past, but you're not part of that anymore. And now because you're not part of that, you're actually in Christ. You've got to think and believe and know that you're different and act therefore differently. And I think, feel like it's a good message for us even in this day where we are being shaped whether we like it or not, whether we understand it or not, you and I are being shaped every day by a culture that doesn't believe in Jesus, that doesn't follow the word of God, that actually has different ideas and ideologies and you think, well, no, I'm not. Well, actually, unless, we're very, very work, unless we work very, very hard against it, the reality is every single one of us here in this room, have imbibed something of the culture of earth that God wants to change and say, no, 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 no. That's not how you do it around here. This is how we do it because we live in heaven, right? And so, you know, for, for in our day, we're living out of maybe the standard of the world where we get to decide what is truth. We get to decide, this is my belief, it's my thought, as long as it's good for me, it's fine for me. There's no such thing as absolute truth. Maybe with, you know, we put our identity in our family of origin. We came from the right family. We came from the right nation. We've got the right skin color or the wrong skin color. We've got, we came from a different religion. We come from this place where we have no religion. Maybe we put our identity in ourselves and our self-expression and our individual you know, beliefs and ideas. Maybe we put ourselves in our identity in making ourselves better. Project self. Maybe we put our identity in our, our work, our success, our jobs, our bank account, our finances, our house, the neighborhood we live in, the car that we drive. Maybe we put ourselves success from being part of this church because, you know, we had it, you know, whatever, right? Maybe we put our, our identity in our gender or our sexuality or our nationality or our politics. Maybe we put ourselves in different camps Well, we're in and they are not in, whoever they might be. It's us, we've got it, those people, no way. Maybe we put our identity in our busyness and how, you know, like st how much stuff we've got going on. Do you know something? We all struggle with that, so I'm not preaching at you, I'm preaching to myself. But the reality is that is not our true identity. Those things are not our true identity. Our true identity uh, is who God's made us to be. Those are all lesser identities. The reality that we've just been just read right there and we're going to unpack and explore, and explore is, is that, that God, God is, is bigger, bigger than, than we, we know and is able, able to, to do far more, more than we could we ask, ask or, imagine. or imagine. And he, and he has, has lifted, lifted us, us up, up in, in Christ Jesus, having dealt with all of our sin and all of our shame and set us free from the world and all of its culture and desires and our... And he's blessed us and, his, and our true meaning and our true life and our true identity is Christ. And our passion, our desire for each one of us, myself included, is that Christ would be formed in us in great depth and our identities would be anchored in who he is. I want you to know that if you're part of this church or even if you're not part of this church that you're just visiting for the first time, that you belong to God. You belong not because of the good things that you've done. In fact, you belong despite the good things and the bad things that you've done. You belong because he loves you. And his love will transform you. So when you join this church, you don't have to behave a certain way. 
You have to, you, your job is to receive the love of God, be part of this community, and as you do so, what you'll experience is God's love changes you. And when God's love changes you, then it will change your inside and everybody will notice the outside because you will be different and you will act differently, you'll think differently, you'll talk differently, everything about you will be growing in that difference. And so, let's unpack this a little bit. Bla verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. What, what does that mean? Well, the blessing that God's talking about, well, first of all, he's saying praise God, and we love to praise God, right? Blessed, it just means God, we bless you, we bless you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we bless you? Because you've blessed us, right? And what's the blessing? Well, the word in, in Greek, it means a present, or one of its meanings is a present given as a sign of gracious kindness to promote the livelihood of the recipient. We see that kind of thing, you know, when there's a famine somewhere, you know, I grew up in the, you know, the, the era of live aid and band aid. Anyone remember that? You know, where there was artists that, that gathered together and we gave money to support a famine in Africa. We saw this even a couple of years, you know, last year when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine and we as a church family across the, the world, we, we raised say, like up to $200,000 to actually help our brothers and sisters in Ukraine to say, look, we believe in you, we love you, we want you to be, uh, to, we want to see your livelihood and your, your, um, your we want to promote your livelihood and we want to bless you. That's what this word means. It's, it's God moving on our behalf so that we actually live in a place of, of, of goodness and joy. And, and it's especially with, a gift, with the giver characterized by joyful uh, generosity. It's a present given as a sign of a gracious kindness. So what's the blessing? God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. The other dimension of blessing is it's, uh, where we get the word eulogy from. Eulogy is, a, is a, a phrase or things that you say at a funeral. Typically, those words are good words. I don't know if you've ever, I don't, I've never been, never heard of a funeral where, you know, you get to the funeral and the guys, everyone stands up and says, well, that guy was a total idiot and we're glad he's gone. Man, he made our lives so hard. He was just so good. We, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to have a party and dance on his grave. That typically doesn't happen. Even if they're really, really vile people, you know, you know the, the, in the eulogy, you find the very best things to say about those people, right? You know, oh, they were uh, kind, and, you know, they had that moment where they did that good, and, you know, they loved this, you know, that you, you look for something good. In a eulogy, it's good words that are being spoken over you. So the blessing of heaven is that good words are being spoken over you and I all of the time. When God thinks about you, when heaven's speaking about you, which is to say that God's speaking about you, he speaks about, your, about how much you love him. He speaks about how much you've overcome. He's not aware and pointing out all your failures and your shortcomings and your faults and your problems. He's just saying, look what they've overcome. Woo! It's glorious. Look at my kids. I love them. They're so beautiful. They're so wonderful. They are just such, oh, oh they're so good in my heart. I love them so much. It's a blessing that God speaks over us, the good works that we've, that, no, the, 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 sorry, the achievements that God has helped us overcome, the things that have happened. So it's blessing, it's God's hand of kindness towards us for our good and for our welfare. It's God's words of life and affirmation being spoken over us all of the time. And then it says that it's every spiritual blessing. So the spiritual is important to understand because sometimes we can look at our lives and we can measure how much quote unquote blessing that we look in our, see in our lives as to how much God loves us. But what he says is it's spiritual blessing. It's blessing that comes, good words that come in the realm of the spirit. So it's not that we have a good life, an easy life, and everything is just plain sailing for us. No, we have difficulty and we have challenge. The blessing is that we have Christ with us all of the time. 
And so the spiritual blessing, it's pertaining to the spirit. It's not just focused on material blessings. It's not just focused on the good life. It's focused on, it's in the realm of the spirit. Don't let your circumstances dictate to you whether God loves you or not. I saw we were on the plane yesterday and there's a husband and wife in the front of us and they were kind of kissing and canoodling a little bit. And, you know, he got an apple out and he, he, he twisted the apple, you know, twist, 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 you know. And I remember doing that as a kid, you know. You know, you'd tw I would twist the apple and then when the stalk breaks off, maybe it's just an English thing, I don't know. But then you'd take the stalk and you'd punch the apple. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. Loves me not. And then you'd push it really hard when you come to loves me, just so that it would go in there, right? That's not what God's doing. We don't have to worry, is, does God love us or not? He's not twisting the apple and pushing it in, saying, hmm, not sure, oh, good. You get the point. He loves us, and it's in the realm of the Spirit. So what are the blessings? So he unpacks in the rest of the chapter, the rest of the verses, the rest of Ephesians, actually. You know, this verse 33 to verse 14 is actually all one long sentence. Is Paul like, he just can't help himself. These blessings are so spectacular that the pen never stops. He's just writing and writing and writing and he just, you know, he can't put a pause on it. The blessings, well, what are those blessings? Well, verse four, it says this, that he chose us. He chose you, not just yesterday, but before the foundation of the world. Before the world was even formed, he decided, you know what, I want to choose them. I choose you. He chose you because he loved you. And what did he choose you for? He chose you that you and I would be holy and blameless, spotless and above reproach in his sight. And you might be aware of all your shortcomings. You might be aware of your sin. You might be aware of the things where you have fallen short, but that is not how God sees you. God doesn't see you according to your sin. He sees you according to his love. And, he's, and you right now, there's a dimension of you in the spirit realm that is standing before him in glory right now. And he's saying over you, you are holy and you are spotless and you are without reproach and you are without blemish. And I love you. So we've been chosen. Second thing in verse 5 we see is that we've been chosen or predestined for adoption as sons. And so that, cho that adoption... You know, we often think about it in the sense of we didn't have a family and then a family comes along and they adopt us and they make us part of their family. And there's a dimension of that that's true. But actually in this context, in the Roman and Greek world, there was a, a, an official ceremony of adoption that looked like this. An individual, it's like a father like me, uh, I, I don't have, I have sons, I've just got daughters. We've got four daughters. So the adoption ceremony would happen is I would find some man who would become my, who I would want to choose as my heir, and I would say, okay, this person I'm going to adopt in my family, and they're going to become the inheritors of all of my possessions. And we would stand in front of the public square, and I would say, this is my son, him whom I love. This is the one that's going to carry my heir and my inheritance forward. It's not just about belonging, it's, although there is a dimension of belonging, it's also about an inheritance. Not just that God has chosen us to be his sons and to draw close to him, although he has, but actually he's done that so that we receive an inheritance from him. That everything that is good about him passes on to us. That's the every spiritual blessing. Verse 7. What's verse 7? Well, he talks about redemption and forgiveness of sins. Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. What's redemption? Well, redemption is a liberation. You redeem something that's bound. You redeem something that's in, that's in prison. You buy it back and you own it yourself. So what God's done for us through the blood of Jesus is though we were enslaved to our sin, enslaved to the culture of the world around us, enslaved to the, the, the demonic realm, even though we were alienated from God, he has set us free. He's liberated us. He's broken the chains of our captivity so that we can be free to be all that he's called us to be. No longer living as victims, no longer defined by sin that we can't shake off, but now ah, free in Jesus' name. But not only free, but forgiven. 
Forgiven, forgiveness comes because of a, recon- a, a need for God to be reconciled to us and for us to be reconciled to God because all the things that we've done wrong in our lives have separated us from God, but he's rescued us by pouring out his wrath upon his son so that we could come into an essential and eternal relationship with the Father. Free access. Verse 10, 9 and 10. What else is the blessing? Well, the blessing that comes that we see in 9 and 10 is this, that God has given us his insight into his heart and his mind. Not only are we um, you know, chosen before him into the foundation of the world, not only have we become sons uh, with an inheritance, not only have we you know, been set free from sin and you know, set free from the wrath of God, we've now come into a deep relationship where God is pleased, it's his good pleasure to share with us why he does what he does and to share with us his heart. And then the final blessing that Paul points out in verse 11 is the inheritance, the gift of the Spirit of God, the hope of glory who's given to us. It's like ownership and a seal and a a protection of, of, of our salvation. And at the end of it, it says this, that the Holy Spirit, verse 14, he's the guarantee of our inheritance, the deposit, the down payment. You know, when you buy a house, you put 20% down and say, I'm going to buy this house. I'm good for it. And then at some point you own it. That's what God's done. That's what the Spirit of God is for us. And it's not just this translation says until we acquire possession of it. But actually you could also read it where it's in the other form that says that God acquires possession of you and I. That the Spirit of God is poured out upon us to seal the fact that we're we're in Christ, to put the evidence together that we're in Christ, and then to actually say, you know what, this is proof that I'm going to claim you as my own, that I've fully bought you and you're going to go to heaven and be with me forever. And so very quickly, why has God done this? Well, verse 4 says, in love. He's so full of love that you can't hold him back. He's so full of love that no matter what you do, he's for you. He's so full of love that he's given his own self for you. It says that he's rich in grace. You know, to me, that's just like he's, he's got limitless, limitless money. Could you imagine if you had unlimited money and wealth in the world? It's one thing to have unlimited wealth and to be super rich. It's another thing to bless other people with it to lavish that upon other people. And this is the truth of God, that he is rich in grace and he loves to lavish that grace upon each one of us because he loves us. He's not obliged to. It's not based on our nationality or our social status or our good nature. It's not based on our behaviors, our beliefs, our success, even our failures. It's based in the nature of who God is and the performance of Jesus. So where do we receive these? Well, no, before I go, that's verse eight. I love this verse. It says, in fullness, he's lavished it upon us in full wisdom and insight. I like that because sometimes I can feel like I've pulled the wool over God's eyes. And there's a moment where he's gonna see that I've done something wrong and he's suddenly gonna go, oh oh boy, I, I made a mistake. I thought you were like this, but uh, uh, no, you're not like that at all. You just goofed, and I I can't handle that anymore. And I live like that sometimes. But But what it says here is, Paul's saying is, God knows everything about you and I already. It's in fullness of wisdom and insight. There's no pulling the wool over his eyes. In fact, what he sees is absolutely everything. He sees all of your failures. He sees all of your weaknesses. He even sees your thought life. And all the dark and nasty thoughts, maybe that's just me, but all the dark and nasty thoughts that go through your mind. And he says, there's nothing that you can pull the wool over my eyes about. I have full wisdom. I have full revelation. I have full insight. And I choose you. (laughs) And by the way, where it says purpose in verse 5 and verse 9, a better translation would be good pleasure. He wants you. 
You're not twisting his arm. You haven't got God's arm up against his back and you're saying, pick me, choose me, love me, want me. No, no, no. He's already got his arm out and his arm is actually extended towards each one of us. And it says, it's my good pleasure to bless you with everything that you need. And where does that, where do we get those blessings? Well, we get those blessings, and this phrase appears again and again and again through this, this, this book, is it's in Christ Jesus. There's no salvation, there's no blessing, there's no life, there's no joy, there's no peace outside of Christ. He is the one that is, was chosen and he's the one that was adopted. And he's the one that set us free. And he's the one that is fulfilling God's purposes. And he's the one that received the, you know, gave the, received the Spirit and then gave the Spirit. He's the one that we now, when we said yes to Jesus, have been fused relationally with him forever and all eternity. Not able to be separated from him. Ash and I, we, were, we, um, we flew to California back in... in um, in November last year, and at the start of the, the day, I had forgotten to put my frequent flyer in, number in, and we were literally in the second last, no, we were in the very back row of the plane, you know, those seats that don't roll back, you know, don't push back, and so you're there at the very back with everybody going to the toilet. By the end of the day, when I, when I went to get, you know, get, put my details in, by the end of the day, we were in seat 2A and 2 on 3A or something like that, right? We had moved to the very front of the plane where they serve you nice food with cutlery, you know, and drinks anytime you like and all of that kind of stuff. And it was all to do with my status. But let me let you into a little secret. I did nothing to earn that status. What had happened was the church in Raleigh had a credit card that was attached to my name. And someone else spent all the money and I got all the blessing. And so I'm sitting here in first class, and we were, flew, we were down in Tulsa and then in, in, um, in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina yesterday, and I'm, we're both sitting in first class for three of the four flights, and we're like, how the heck did we get here? But thank you, Jesus, this is good. I could get used to this, right? <laughs> we're thinking about we're flying to Israel tomorrow, and I'm thinking at the back of the plane. But that's okay, because I still have the spiritual blessings in Christ right there, right? But here's the reality was I was living the life of luxury and I did nothing to deserve it. Someone else paid the price on my behalf. That's what's happened to us in Christ. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can overwhelm you. Nothing can come between you because God has decided to fuse himself to you relationally forever. The only way you can get out of that is to by reject him. Not a good idea. But your sin won't get you, get you out unless you persist and you persist and you persist and you persist. Nothing will separate you from God's love. We're in Christ Jesus, not on our own effort. So this is a quick illustration. I'm wrapping up soon, I promise you. This is a glass of water, bottle of water. It's got water in it. I'll prove it. Delicious water. Water is in the bottle. If I had a bucket of water and I put this in the bucket, would water still be in the bottle? But would the bottle be in water? Yeah, the bottle would be in water and water would be in the bottle. That's who we are in Christ. God's put us into Christ, so we're, Christ is all around us. But Christ, God has also by the Spirit put himself and Christ in us, so Christ is in us. So everywhere we go, he goes with us. Whether we're it's not just here limited to this building, but everywhere we go, he is there with us. And it's not based on our own effort, not based on our own dependence, not based on anything, but the glory and the love of the Father and the grace of Jesus. Oh, and I can imagine in heaven all of the angels going, wait, 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 wait a minute, Lord, you did that with those guys? You are so spectacular. How the heck did you achieve that with them? But that's what he does. So what does it mean for us? We're going to unpack this over the next few weeks. But the thing that I want to just recommend to you is to receive the love of God. So I want to invite you to stand if you would. Stand. Oh, I had an Adam Ant, an Adam Ant song come in my head just then. Stop there right now, quick. Showing my age, yeah. 
Why don't you give yourself a hug? Wrap your arms around you right now. Give yourself a really big hug. Rub your shoulders. If you can, pat yourself on the shoulders. You know, just do it and do it for a little while. Because here's the truth. If Christ is in you, you are just hugging Christ right now. You can say, thank you, Jesus, for being in me. Thank you for dwelling on the inside. Oh, thank you for your love and your affection. Thank you for your affirmation. Thank you that there's nothing that can separate me from your love. Thank you that I'm in with you for all of eternity. Thank you that this relationship that you brought me into right now is something that I'm going to enjoy forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Just give yourself a hug. And while you're giving yourself a hug, just take a moment to surrender your false identities. Anything that you've found that gives you significance and meaning, that's all that means. If you find yourself having meaning by sitting in first class, I had to sort myself out yesterday, give myself a slap around the face and say, you don't, you know, you're just, just get over yourself, you know, because I'm all of a sudden going from, I've never been in first class to, yeah, I deserve to be here, you know. Like, hello, hello. What's wrong with you? Okay, so Lord, I really release the false identity of being in first class, of having status in frequent flyers. Lord, I release false identity. Just release it. And if you want, just lay it down as a crown at Jesus' feet. And as we wrap up, just say, Holy Spirit, I yield to you. In Jesus' name. Oh, I apologize. I've gone long. But, I don't know, I just had to get going. Bless you, we love you, you're amazing. Excellent, oh wow, well bless you guys. We're gonna end the meeting. If you, just, if you wanna receive or there's any, you can come forward for prayer. We don't have necessarily a prayer ministry team here this morning, but if you wanna spend some time with the Lord, you know, we may have people that will come and lay hands on you, but you can just come forward um, and just in response to the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, I want to bless you to have a phenomenal week, to be full of Jesus and to read through Ephesians 1, remind ourselves that we're in Christ and He is in us. And be blessed. If you've been tuning in online, thank you so much. We want it. We'll see you again soon. Please, if, you're, if this is your first Sunday, you can, uh, we'd love to meet you at the Welcome Center. Have a wonderful and blessed day in Jesus' name. Amen.